It is a scanner for micro-range scanning of rock art, which has deliberately been built for that purpose. What you see here on the floor is a small portion of a 3D print of ancient rock art packed into large rock panels in Valcamonica in Italy. This has been reconstructed in 3D, printed, and is now just used as a demonstrator object. What we would do out in the wild is put the scanner on top of the art to be scanned, press the button. What you see is a flash and what you maybe hear, I can do it another time later when the green light is on again. You can now hear two different pictures being taken in succession. First one with flash, second one without flash. And also you see it's two SLR cameras here. What we are taking is a pair of images with flash and another pair without flash. Looking at the specifics of the flash, this is custom design, 220 high-intensity white LEDs cast a very homogeneous field of illumination down on the ground, pictured by this stereo setup of the two cameras. We take a stereo pair with illumination, another one without illumination, and by subtracting these frames from each other, we can virtually shroud the influence of daylight. So we can even eliminate cast shadows, which would be cast by direct sunlight. And that ends us up with radiometrically corrected images, which just show the radiometric surface properties under artificial illumination. So radiometric, that means color, does it? Radiometric means color, but in addition, what we also model is by reconstructing the 3D surface, we have direction of illumination, calibrated for each of these 220 LEDs. We have a view angle of the camera and we have surface normal of the particular surface element. So we can really model the interplay between uh, incident light, surface normal of a small surface patch and uh, viewing direction. In the end, we reconstruct a dense 3D point cloud where each point carries radiometric information, color information about each element in this point cloud on the rock surface. So for people who've never heard of a point cloud before, a point a bit like pixels. It is coordinates actually. Uh, it's not, uh, not the same as pixels in an image because even if it is very, very dense, there is a lot of space around the individual point. So it is 3D coordinates a file full of 3D coordinates, you could say, and each of these points uh, carrying additional information, in this case RGB. If you try to visualize that, you would see a lot of dots, and either if you splatter them, if you make, say, a spherical approximation of this uh, infinitesimal small point, you, you would end up in viewing it, you would perceive it as a surface. But actually it is points. It's a bit like a computer version of atoms, yeah? Uh, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> so here there is custom electronic, including a Raspberry Pi. On the Pi, it runs uh, Linux and it just controls uh, the cameras, actually. It, it then fetches the JPEGs and via wireless transfer, it transfers it to a tablet PC, which normally is taken by the archaeologists with him laying on the rock just beside the scanner. And on this tablet PC, online, uh, we get a rough 3D reconstruction from JPEGs. At the same time, we store the raw images in the cameras on the storage cards. And going home, we take the raw images for doing this fine radiometric evaluation. Using structure from motion plus stereo, we get uh, correctly scaled point clouds, which means it is a point cloud where distances can be measured, distances between different points. However, this point cloud, it could be anywhere in the world. Uh, if we would like to relate what we scan to what has been scanned before, side by side maybe, we need common coordinate system. That's the other trick with this scanner here. Uh, what you see there is a micro prism. So this prism is very precisely measured by a total station. A surveyor's instrument, it could be viewed as a theodolite, uh, where you also measure the distance from the measurement device to this prism, not just angles. 
Originally, when we developed the thing, we started and asked for measurements every time the button is, the button is pressed, right? But uh, in the end, it turns out if you, for instance, need, say, 100 scanning positions to scan a reasonable area of rock, it would be enough to do a few of these prism measurements just at nicely balanced locations uh, to finally be able to translate and rotate this 3D model in a way that it perfectly fits with georeferenced coordinates of whatever has been scanned, pictured, uh, reconstructed by the archaeologists otherwise. It is altitude as well. It is the 3D position in geographical coordinates of this particular prism. This is the one 3DP rock art scanner prototype. Most of the time it, it uh, proved to work quite well. Uh, when something went wrong, it mostly uh, concerned communication via the wireless to the tablet PC. If it's too far away, we have then we, we added some aluminium shielding here. Uh, this also blocks the wireless communication in some cases, but that are minor issues actually. The other thing is uh, this device will measure only perfect if uh, it is well calibrated. So it had to be shipped back to our department in Graz for fine recalibration. We also designed some targets so that it could be calibrated in the wild uh, in the archaeological campaign, but best calibration was of course obtained at home in our, in our measurement lab. It's a nice thing, it has worked very well and robustly over one and a half years almost, uh, but it's unique. So that's a drawback of course. Uh, we have already submitted a proposal to the EU for a follow-up project where this should be turned into a product zone. Then this product would be available as a commercial product for archaeologists all over the world. And probably it can be used for many other questions of 3D reconstruction of surface shape, including surface radiometry. It is color, maybe even extended to invisible wavelengths, ultraviolet, infrared. The final one, it should become a product, it should be well under 5,000 uh, euros. This one was a little more expensive because it had to be uh, assembled from many components and there was also some trial and error phase one included, of course. One to the other place and to other places and use this information.